Good morning. I want to welcome each and every one of you today to our welcome meet and greet. We started this in 2017 and it has been a very, very helpful meeting, very informative, um, educational for all of you. Just so you know, I'm going to give you a brief history, a little bit about Bella Vista, and then I'm going to introduce Tom Judson and Peter Christie here to walk through all of the amenities, walk through the difference between the city and the ACC and the POA, and then we will have an opportunity for all of you to ask questions. And then all of you have received little tickets, so we do have some books that we're gonna be giving out, raffling out to all of you about Bella Vista and, and Arkansas. And um, I wanna welcome each of you. Um, I have new, I, I don't have, my glasses broke this morning. And I have double vision, so let me tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to deal as best I can, but you all look great. There's just two of you. <laughs> also, I have to see a show of hands. How many of you are from Texas? Okay. And how many of you are from California? Okay, so those are the two states today that, have, have, that are here the most. So I just thought I would mention that. Um, a little bit of history about Bella Vista. Bella Vista is not just your typical run-of-the-mill city. It started in 1915, and there was a family named the Baker family who lived in Bentonville, and they bought the rights to dam up Little Sugar Creek, and they made Lake Bella Vista and bought the land right around there. Their goal was to make a summer resort area. Well, it lasted two years, and they decided it was way above their heads. So then they sold the name Bella Vista and the lake and the privilege around the lake to three Linebarger brothers from Texas. And those three gentlemen developed Bella Vista but continued strictly for the summer between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day. And basically what they did was they had a multi-purpose nine-hole golf course because it was also the airstrip because there was no airport here. So if you come to the Bella Vista Museum, you will see a picture of the nine hole golf course, an airplane landing, and a horse drawn mower. And these golfers are looking around like, what's going on here? In 1939, no, 29, I'm sorry, 29, the Leinbarger brothers also built a very large hotel and it was called the Sunset Hotel. And if you go down 71, there's Sunset Drive off to the right. And that's where the hotel was. It was used for many years as a hotel. It was used as a Baptist school. Um, it was used as offices for the Cooper Corporation. And then it burned down. So unfortunately, you can still see where it was, but it is no longer there. In 1930, they also, the Leinbarger brothers, they didn't build this cave. It was the Wonderland Cave was already here. What they had done is they'd gone to Paris and realized that in Paris there were some caves that could be used for meeting rooms, dances, big band music, that type of thing. So the Wonderland Cave was introduced to Bella Vista and it was a very, very successful dance venue and a meeting room and that type of thing. It is currently closed it is now owned by grandsons of the Waltons. So we don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, in 1952, the Leinbarger brothers sold Bella Vista, lock, stock, and barrel, to E.L. Keith is the name of the gentleman. And Mr. Keith was an extremely religious man. He did not believe in dancing or alcohol. So he did not buy the cave, but he also turned the big venue for dancing into a roller skating rink. So that was, uh, and that also uh, burned down, unfortunately, all of these wooden buildings. In 1964, E.L. Keith sold the right to Bella Vista and the name and the Lake Bella Vista 
to the John Cooper Sr. individual who wanted to develop Bella Vista year round. And it was, when you hear about the Cooper Corporation and we talk today, John Cooper Sr. had a goal to make this a year round retirement, but also a recreational area. And that's where we are today. And the Cooper Corporation developed everything north of Lake Bella Vista and bought all the land up to the Missouri border. And these were all small farms. They were all small farms. John Cooper's first building that was built is this building that you're in right now. And this building was the country club building. It is the country club building, the first golf course in Bella Vista. We have seven golf courses. Um, but it was designed by E. Faye Jones. And E. Faye Jones was an architect, very well known. He was a student of Frank Lloyd Wright's. So when you think about this building, and then also he desi designed the Cooper Chapel, and I know a few of you said you hadn't been there yet, and you really do need to go see the Cooper Chapel. Anyway, in 2007, the city, it wasn't the city yet, we were still the village, and the village basically voted to become a city. Thus, we have a mayor, <laughs> And in 2008 is when Bella Vista became the city. We are now over 30,000 individuals and we are 36,000 acres. So as you know and you look around the beauty of all of us around here, we count our, our grateful beauty in this area. So anyway, I'm gonna turn this over now. Um, well, I shouldn't mention, the Bella Vista Museum is on Kingsland and Highway 71. We're open Wednesday to Sunday from one to five. The, there's a pictorial book and 100% of the proceeds goes back to the museum. It's a great book. Normally they're here and they do sell those, but they are not here today. So anyway, there's a, a great book. They have a lot of Bella Vista t-shirts and they have other things like the Cooper Chapel pictures and things like that. Now, I am gonna turn this over to Tom Judson, who is the COO of the POA. <laughs> there you go. Well, good morning, everybody. I uh, want to give a shout out to the Bell Vista TV, um, who's filming this uh, and so forth. Um, they do a great job, all volunteers. So, how'd everybody do on the quiz? <laughs> Any failures out there? Okay, so here's the point of the whole quiz, is we developed this because so many people have lived here for years and years, and they have no idea of all the things that we offer. So, the, so if you checked every single one, we offer every single one of these items. And so, uh, while most people know about the lakes and the golf courses, they don't know the little stuff like we have a little business center with a printer and Wi-Fi up there and so forth. So they don't know about the little stuff. So um, hold on to this, or this, sorry, and uh, that's just your little intro on everything that we offer because um, as we say, uh, we are a POA on steroids. Um, a lot of, okay, so the next thing is, um, I'm gonna have you grab this sheet, okay? So Bella Vista is different than most communities, really any community, um, in that we, uh, we think of ourselves as a three-legged stool. So we have three organizations that all work together in tandem. So the first is the city of Bella Vista, and we have Mayor Christie here. Okay? In the city of Bella Vista, they take care of the police, the fire, the roads, building permits, those types of things. Okay, And then you have the POA, the Property Owners Association. We're in the fun business. We're the golf courses, the lakes, uh, we're many restaurants, tennis courts, pickleball courts, all those things that you can have fun with. Um, now, the city and the POA jointly work together for the 100 miles worth of trails. Okay, so we're a team on that one. And then the last part of it is the ACC, that's the Architectural Control Committee. They're gonna make sure that you don't paint your house bubblegum pink and upset your neighbors, so forth. So 
when you think of it, the Bella Vista, you gotta think of the three-legged stool. And so there's times that it can become confusing as to who you need to talk to and so forth. But the good thing is, is we all work together really well. So while uh, the, the POA at our member services uh, facility, we may receive 40,000 calls a year, 20,000 of those calls have nothing to do with the POA. But we know that and we help you get, in the right, get the, headed in the right direction, whether you need to talk to the city, the ACC, or maybe it's one of the, uh, one of the other players in it. Maybe it's Carroll Electric. Maybe it's Village Wastewater. We're going to help you out. And the city does the same thing. They send calls our way and so forth. So we all work together because uh, we're all in the same sandbox. Okay. So that's the three-legged stool. So it can be confusing at times. Now the good, re good news is, is like if you need to get a building permit, you're going to get it from the city and you may also have to get it from the ACC, but their offices are right next to each other. So they'll tell you, okay, you got to go next door. All right. All right. And they all have their distinct different function. Okay. All right. Here's the next thing. All right. Here's your guide to Bella Vista. We talked about the POA being in the fun department. Well, let's talk about some of the stuff that we're fun, that's really fun to do. Because hopefully when you moved here, you didn't just move here to stay in your house and sit on the couch all day long. All right. So we're going to take the map. And on the far left-hand side of that map, that's the west side, we're going to go through some of the key amenities. So on the far west side, um, if you're into skeet, trap, uh, guns, uh, pistol, rifle, that's where, our, that's where it is. All the way on the far side, it's, not even, it's so far out, it's not even in the city of Bella Vista, it's in county. But think of it, where do you want, to, where do you want people fighting, shooting stuff? Way out there. <laughs> because not everybody's really good in their accuracy. Um, it happens. Um, moving north, there's Highlands. So Highlands is 18-hole golf course, it's a pub, and about three weeks ago, we added pizza there. So you can go there, you can do all those things. Uh, fun place. Let's move up to Branchwood. Now, that's a real big center of activity. We have the Branchwood Fitness Facility. It's our only indoor pool. We have group fitness there. We also have a mile and a half path, nice 10-foot wide trail you can go down when you get to the bottom of the hill. You might want to take a break. <laughs> it's a little steep coming back up. Um, and we also have disc golf, and we have um, three, four pickleball courts there. So a um, lot of activity in that area. Um, moving south, uh, you'll see the um, uh, Lake Point and the Marina. So that's one of our premier restaurants. If you haven't been there, I encourage you to go there. The view is beautiful. It looks over the, golf, uh, over the water. It's just a great location. I personally feel that we, that the POA has the three best views. This is the first one, the lake at uh, uh, Lake Point and the view from the back at Highlands. The three best views in, in Bella Vista, I think are right there. Um, and they get even better if you can see, also see the mayor at the same time. <laughs> that's still $10. That's still $10. Um, all right, so at Lake Point, that's our event center. You can get married there. We have a restaurant. We have the wine bar. It's great. We also have the marina. You can rent a kayak. You can re rent a boat. We just got a new pontoon boat in. It came in three days ago. So uh, we rent all those things. You can get um, simple fishing gear. You're not going to get really in-depth stuff. Go down to Bass Pro for that. But uh, you can get uh, simple stuff. Um, and then, okay, now we're going to move over to Scottsdale. Scottsdale's another golf course, 18-hole golf course, um, really nice. The clubhouse is a lot of fun. Um, it's uh, designed after a Scottish-style pub, and you don't have to like golf to go there because it's got a great view of the golf course. It's got a great deck. You can go grab a beer, sit outside. That's what Alice, my wife Alice and I will do sometimes. Grab a beer, sit out. It's beautiful out there. All right, now we're going to move down to the beach. Who knew we had a beach in the middle of the country? <laughs> Did you go to the beach yet? Oh, yeah. yes. Outstanding, outstanding. Beach is only open at 17, 
17, 18, we opened it up. Um, it's a great location if you haven't been there. We have the sand, we have it roped off so you can swim in that area. We have this little lily pad that the kids swim out on and they get on top of. We have a little hut, and you guys can attest to this, we sell every form of sugar there is. Um, <laughs> candy bars, ice cream, whatever the kids want, you know, we want to wind them up even more, you know, that's our goal. Um, there's also beach volleyball there, and there's a, um, there's a uh, playground equipment, uh, like a zip line, and I personally have weight tested the zip line. So, uh, we're looking good. And it was actually a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move over, and you'll see where it says BV Bar and Grill and the uh, BVCC, the country club. So that's where we are right here. And Deb talked about this is an E. Faye Jones building, and it's actually on the historic registry, which is really cool. Back in 2008, the board had a split vote on whether to tear the building down. So we came that close years ago to tearing this building down, and now it is everything that it is right today. So it's our busiest restaurant, bar, the golf course, the shop is over there. This shop is award-winning. It's really a great shop. If you want something uh, or if you, uh, if you want to get a present uh, or a gift for someone, go stop in there. So uh, this is a lot of activity up here. Um, this is where we have our HR department. Uh, for those that uh, are interested in a job, we're desperately hiring for people. So if you want a part-time job, come apply today. Um, uh, and uh, this is where our admin office is. Uh, so this is actually where I, I um, take my naps regularly. Um, uh, moving out, it's only two a day, it's only two. Uh, Moving down to Tanyard Creek. Tanyard Creek's another uh, hub of activity. We have the Tanyard Creek driving range. Uh, it's our busiest driving range. And so we're gonna pause right there. We're gonna talk about how great, how, who has an activity card? All right, all right. So I'm not gonna ask the people that don't have an activity card. So for $30 for an activity card, $30 a year, you're gonna get unlimited free use of the gym facilities, pool, beach, you're going to get free admittance into the gun range, you got to pay for the clay targets, makes sense, um, uh, free range balls, uh, all that you can hit, free green fees at Brittany Golf Course, and 10% off your food at all the restaurants run by the POA. So you can't beat it, so if you don't have an activity card, go get one. Now one thing that I've noticed, since we've implemented all of the uh, free range balls, and we've gone from doing about 15,000 bucks range balls to 56,000 range ball, bucks of range balls. There has been no improvement in the average score. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but it's a great, it's a great deal. Uh, there's, you know, any time I talk to people from out of state and I tell them that our, that our, um, our assessments are $37 a month, and that uh, I tell them about the activity card with the 30 bucks and they go, you're lying, <laughs> you're lying. So it's a great deal. Um, I'm skipping, skipping all over all the golf courses, but we have a lot of ramps everywhere, great fishing. We have our own in-house uh, lake aquaculture department. We're actually building our own lakes where we're going to grow our own fish. Uh, that's gonna be at the, um, the, uh, at the park at Loch Lomond. Below the dam, we're putting in two um, uh, uh, fisheries. fisheries. That's the word I was looking for, thank you. Um, and we have room for three more. So we actually do that. We test the lakes all the time. We have these mad scientists that make sure that the lakes are healthy and they test it all the time. We have a great um, uh, golf committee, that, uh, lakes committee that works on that. All right, so let's uh, move down from Tanyard Creek. Oh, in addition to Tanyard Creek, in, the, in addition to the driving range, we also have the most beautiful waterfall view and trail that you can go over. So try and go out there. Um, if you have family, and, uh, family or friends in town and they wanna go on a short hike, take them to Tanyard Creek, awesome. Uh, okay, we're gonna go down to Kingsdale, another hub of activity. You'll see that we kind of cluster things together. Um, so Kingsdale has Reardon Hall, 
um, which is our largest 20,000 square foot building. In September, that's gonna be closed for a year. We're gonna completely renovate that beast of an old building. It's 50 years old and it needed to be renovated about 20 years ago. So we're finally getting to it. Uh, we also have our tennis facility out there. Um, we have um, an 18 hole golf course and a nine hole golf course, a clubhouse there, There's a lot of activity. In in addition to that, if you've been to our member services facilities, we have one member services building at Huntley. You probably went there to get your activity card or to get your water signed up, signed up for your water because the POA also takes care of the water. Um, and we also have a second facility at Metfield. Okay? We're going to build a brand new building at that centrally located uh, spot. It's going to have drive-through capabilities. So we're going to close those two, and then we're going to go into one centrally located place where it will be uh, much more customer service friendly. The challenge that we have at Huntley, if you've been to Huntley, um, it's about that. It's on par with the DMV, which is a problem. <laughs> the customer service is great, but the building itself looks like the DMV. And that's, and if you're comparing, does anybody work for the government here? <laughs> anybody work for the DMV? Am I in Celtics, someone? Um, okay, I had a lot of caffeine this morning, you can tell. Um, all right, we're gonna j jump all the way to the far east side to uh, Brittany and Dogwood, Metf Metfield area. Okay, so we have uh, an 18 hole golf course, Dogwood. We have a nine hole golf course, that's Brittany. So if you get the activity card, you get free green fees at Brittany, okay? All you can play. Um, in addition to that, we have a little pub there and a small fitness center. Now, when we build the member services building in the center of the community, we talked about that, and we close the two member services building, we're gonna close the one at Metfield and we're gonna turn that space into more fitness, okay? Because the Metfield Fitness Facility is lacking. And by closing that facility, we'll be able to increase the size of the fitness area by about 40%, okay? Which will be better. It won't be 100% fixed, but it'll be much better than what we're currently at, okay? Um, we also have pool over at uh, Metfield um, and um, a bike skills park. So if you wanna learn how to ride a bike and you're a kid, that's a bike skills park. There's, uh, we're building brand new pickleball courts. It's gonna be four brand new pickleball courts that are currently under construction. And that's the start of the Razorback Greenway. It is the northest, northernest location of the Razorback Greenway. You can jump on there 10 foot wide concrete path and it'll go 40 miles all the way south to Fayetteville. And it stops in our own park, pretty neat. Now when it's going south, it goes through Blowing Springs, okay? At Blowing Springs, we have a 60 uh, um, slot uh, camper facility. We have primitive camping where you can sleep on the ground. I don't know why you'd want to do it, but people are into that. Um, we also have tiny cabins that you can rent. We, have, we added three additional tiny cabins. Uh, they're fantastic. And we also have the gear garden. If you haven't been to the gear garden, it is a beer garden in the woods under the shade. It's fantastic. Um, that is, we have not yet hit our one year anniversary on the gear garden, but it is very popular. Okay, uh, I'm gonna backtrack to um, Reardon. So we're gonna be completely renovating that building. It'll be closed for a year. We're gonna double the size of the fitness facility because if you work out at Reardon Hall, you'll say, eh, it's a little bit tight, it's okay, but it's eh. We're gonna fix all that. We're gonna double the size and we're also gonna have it where you have 24 hour access. So if you wanna work out at two o'clock in the morning, I don't know why you want to, you'll be able to clock in, we'll have a camera and everything, and you'll be, in, you'll be able to work out. So if you have an odd work schedule, go for it. You can work out there. Okay, so that's a quick whirlwind. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in. Where are my volunteers? Are you guys, are you guys gonna help me here? <laughs> okay, if you get a hand out, okay. They're used to me, I, ha I pick on them all the time. Okay. 
All right, so this is the last part, and I'm going to give it real edited because I've really spoken way too long. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have awesome volunteers or what? No, I wasn't referring to you guys. No, no, no. All right, here we go. All right, so you guys are the guinea pigs. Okay, so this is my first speech. So we talked about the assessments, they're $37 a month. And if, you've, if, you worked in a, if you lived in a plant community in any other state, you're going 37, are you sure? You, did, you probably went to your real estate agent and said, did you say that right? Are you sure it's not 137 or 237? It's 37, okay? So let me give you a quick background. The last increase we were able to get through was in 2020. Prior to that, it had been 20 years, so in 01. So we went 19 years without an increase. Uh, and that was financially, you know, you can think of the, the inflation that occurred over those 19 years. It was really putting us in a financial bind. And in 2020, what we did was we, we were able to get a $13 a month increase approved, but at the same time, what we did was we fixed all of our rates. So what, what would happen is only the membership can approve an assessment increase, but the board can approve a rate increase for amenities like playing golf, going to the beach, um, going to the fitness facility and so forth. So since they couldn't, over, over a lot of years, they couldn't get an assessment increase approved, what they did was every single year they increased how much it cost to play golf, how much it cost to go to the gym and the prices, the rates got out of control. So for example, if you wanted a gym membership, it cost $225 a year, yet you could go to Planet Fitness in Bentonville for 120, and they were better than us. So didn't make sense at all. So with the 2020 plan, we fixed all our rates. We created the activity card where for $30 you get free use to the gym. Hey, now we're competing with the, with the Planet Fitness. All that came as a result of the 2020 plan. Okay, so it worked. It's now three years later, and what we want to do is have another, another assessment increase of $3 a month. Three bucks. Um, so this is it. I'm going to give you the edited version. But what we're, tr what we're asking is for $3 more a month, so it would take you from 37 to 40, we're going to keep all those rates the exact same for three more years. So if you're a golfer, you're going to pay the exact same fees for three more years. So you will have paid the same golf fees, the same fitness fees, everything for six straight years. It's a pretty good deal for $3 more. Um, unfortunately, if you jump to the middle, you'll see that if we don't get the $3 increase, we're going to have to go and we're going to have to increase some of our amenity usage fees. And if you use any of these amenities, you're going to see that chances are your, your cost is going to go up and so forth. So the vote is coming out. We're going to uh, commence the vote on August 10th. Uh, it'll end on October 4th. Um, vote. Get out and vote. Whether you're for it, whether you're against it, just get out and vote. There's two requirements for this to be approved. The first requirement is that 51% of the membership that votes must vote in favor of it. Okay, so it's not 50 plus one, it's actually 51. The second thing is that 50% of the membership must participate to reach quorum. And that's the biggest challenge is getting people to vote 
you know, you see the, the national elections and so forth and hardly anybody votes, same thing for us. So getting over that 50% threshold is really a challenge. So what I'm gonna have you guys, my volunteers, my trusty volunteers, they're gonna hand out a sign-up sheet. So what we did in 2020 is we put together a group of approximately 200 volunteers that made 16,000 calls to members saying, please vote, okay? So all I'm looking for is two hours of your time. That's it. And we give you a, a script. It's really easy. You call a fellow neighbor, a fellow member, and said, hey, Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith, we want to make sure you get out and vote. Your vote counts, really important. You're going to get the ballot on August 10th, okay? So if you're willing to give two hours of your time, please sign up. We're going to ask for your name, your telephone number, and your um, email. And my assistant, Jessica, will get a hold of you. She'll give you a time frame of when you can work. If you can work more than two hours, that's great. So you guys are going to hand them out. Um, where are they? I, there you go. Dan's got them. Okay. So that was your whirlwind tour. Any questions regarding the POA? Okay, great question. Okay, so hey, let's uh, let's keep one. I'll repeat the question. Okay, so here the question is. Um, how are you going to vote if you don't live here? So what we're going to do is we're going to mail you the ballot. And if we have your email address on file, we will also email you the ballot. Approximately 70% of voting typically takes place via email. You can get it done in five minutes or less. It's really easy. Um, that's why when you go to member services, um, they made sure to get your, your name and your email address so that, that it was directly linked. One of the challenges is people will go to member services, they don't give their email address or they change their email address, but they sign up separately for our e-newsletter and those systems currently do not talk. When we upgrade our software system at the end of the year, those system will talk. So they're like, well, I'm getting your emails every single week. Why didn't you send me a ballot? Eh, because they don't talk, okay? So you'll get it. Check your, check your spam folder too. August 10. Any other questions? Yes, sir. You talk about boats. Is that motorized boats? So uh, there's, yes. Kayaks? No, no. Oh, yeah. How many lots are There are 39,000 lots in Bella Vista. There's approximately um, 15,000 rooftops. Okay. Now, here's the mayor is going to speak after me. Here's the, here's the odd thing. The borders of the city and the POA do not match 100%. 95% match up. Um, there's portions of the community that are in the POA and not in the city, and there's portions of the city that are in the city but not in the POA. Um, for example, on the far east side, there's the Heights uh, that is in the POA, not in the city. And if you're in the middle portion of Bella Vista, you might go through a little pockets of farmland. Those are in the city, but not in the POA. Okay, so I took that, I answered your question a little bit more. So there's actually, while the POA has 15,000 homes, there's more than that in the city of Bella Vista, but not too many more because we're really, the POA is the main thing. Okay, yes, sir. So, you know, going, I'm sorry, he was asking about the trails master plan that was developed in 13, 14. Okay, so uh, going back to this map, I skipped over a really important amenity uh, and I'm surprised the mayor didn't hit me in the back of the head. Um, 
everything with the dotted line, the red dotted line, that is the 100 miles worth of trail, okay? So it goes everywhere. So if you're in the bi mountain biking, hiking, anything, we got trails everywhere. Um, and I'm gonna answer your question, but I'm gonna tee off of that. In addition to the 100 miles of trails, we, within that, we have certain areas where we have some adaptive trails. And adaptive trails are, are people that have physical challenges, so maybe they're using a hand crank because their legs don't work and so forth. If you um, are interested in a great trail to go to, go to Tweety Bird. It's about a two mile hike. It's reasonably flat and it goes into the woods. You hardly see any houses. In addition to that, uh, they just finished um, Rillington. Rillington, which is now Snowbird. They finished Snowbird. There's no trailhead yet. They're gonna be building a trailhead and that's gonna be on the far east side another adaptive trail that's reasonably flat that's going to be about two miles and the the next one is right behind where casey's is where the fat tire building is is going in we're building an adaptive trail there it'll be about a half mile uh there's going to be a trailhead there there's going to be a tunnel so you don't have to go across the road uh, playground uh and picnic area and they're going to have the picnic area is going to be kind of like mini um, pavilions, like one, one table, one picnic table under each. So those are under construction now. So a lot of things are happening. So your question was about the uh, trails plan. So according to that trails plan, they've built on the east side, which is the back 40. They've also built the central portion, which is Little Sugar. And so right now, I, I would say, and, and the mayor can correct me, I would say that we're kind of taking a breath and determining whether uh, we want to go and build additional trails on the far west side. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of debate with it, within the community whether we need additional trails or whether 100 miles is, is good enough. And so it's just, it's, uh, that's where we're at right now, quite honestly. And uh, the re they really haven't completely finished Little Sugar yet. So we got to finish this first. You know, I just mentioned multiple trails um, that they're still working on. So I think that at some point in the future, there will be a debate and a discussion about whether we want to put trails on the west side. Pretty much everything on the trails has been paid for by the Walton Family Foundation and the grandson, grandson Stuart and Tom Walton. Um, $18 million, $18 million in trails and, and everything that has gone in. Uh, to Bella Vista, it is outstanding to have that support um, uh, in our community. Any other questions? Do you have a trail map? Trail map? Um, the mayor is going to answer that one. I'm taking up all the time. He's going to hit me. Uh, and he said, "Yes, sir." Oh, we love rumors. <laughs> Did you get it from Facebook too? <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, so, no, no, no. Uh, so, so the POA is owned collectively by the 39,000 property owners. So you, the, the, they would have to go in and buy out every single person. Um, now, there has been this talk, and, and this is not a secret, it's been talked about a lot, is that uh, the Waltons may at some point potentially buy out Cooper. Cooper communities, their interest. Cooper originally developed it in 65. Deb was talking about that. And they still own land in a lot of different areas. So it's possible, but buying out the POA, no. Yeah, can't do it. Anything else? Any other rumors? <laughs> you got a rumor. No, no, question. <laughs> No, nature, Mother Nature doesn't want it to be an 18-0 golf course. We had major flooding in 18, 17, 18 that really wiped us out there. Um, we did a flood study in 2017, and that flood study is available on, our, on the POA's website in the financial section, because we couldn't figure out where else to put it, um, and where it made sense. And we, and we did that study in conjunction with the city, um, and the long and the short of it is, uh, in that study, you will see a map of um, uh, you know, the 
the watershed that flows through Little Sugar Creek. And there's 85.8 square miles of watershed that flows into Little Sugar Creek. And on that study, you can see a satellite image from, two, uh, from 1997, and they overlay that next to an image from 2017. So 20 years later, now quite frankly, this one from 97, the imagery is not very clear, but you can absolutely see the urbanization in that watershed and all that water coming down. So. Uh, no, that, that is not going to turn back into the golf course. We, we have five 18-hole golf courses and two nine-hole golf courses, and that's really meeting our golfers' needs at this time. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Is there a reason why the, uh, the other three lots are not going to have increasing Great question, and I, I apologize that I skipped over that. Um, so the, the, main, the main users of our amenities are improved property owners, which makes total sense. We live here, we go to the gym, we, you, you know, we use the golf courses and so forth. The average unimproved property owner is either an investor or they live out of state and they rarely use it. We've done the stats, we know it for, for certain. And unfortunately, an unimproved property owner, they're not gonna support an increase. Plus, they don't use the amenities. Now, we can step back and say, well, they should. It's protecting their investment and we're all in this together and you bought, you should be able to contribute. Unfortunately, the average unapproved property owner has very little interest in doing that. So that is, it is an amenities driven increase because remember, we're keeping the fees the same. The amenity usage fees the same with the $3 increase. So that's why we're just uh, doing it for improved property owners. Did I answer your question? Last increase they had was 2001. Yeah. And Don't, they're paying $16. Yeah, like I said, there's not a lot of interest on, their, on that part. You know, I interact with a lot of those types of people. It's, it's a tough sell, that's all. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, so that's, that's, a, that's a little bit of a challenging question. So. In theory, originally, there's 39,000 lots. Um, but um, back in 17, they didn't change the rule, but they changed the application of the rule, which, whatever. So the Arkansas Department of, uh, of Health, they modified their application of how they enforce the rule. So it used to be that you could build a home, you know, a two or three bedroom home on a quarter acre lot. And they, with, the, with the change the application of the rule, it's now at least a third of an acre lot. So it's a challenge. So you now have a lot of lots out there that are quarter acre that is really questionable whether you can build on them. Um, you also have a large number, you have about five to 6,000 lots that are owned by the neighbor, okay? so. Allison and I own our home and then we own, I call it a buffer lot because we don't want someone right next to us. So a lot of people, about five to 6,000 lots are buffer lots. So you take those out because they're probably not gonna get built on. So we're, we're gonna probably within a short amount of time, we're gonna hit about 16,000 homes. My guess is 20 is probably the cap. But remember you also, in addition to the size of the lot, you have to get the lot perked and that means you know percolate so percolate so whether it'll take a septic system well a lot of these lots have never been perked so there's no way to know if this if this lot right here will perk or not okay if you're looking at a map so i'm going to guess about 20 i could be off by a little bit but i think we're reaching an upper limit No, 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 it's going to be, it's going to be very difficult, but maybe over time technology changes uh, with septic systems or the, uh, you know, we have sewer in certain areas, but they can only grow so fast and they're a private entity and there's nothing that the mayor and I can do to make them expand quicker. They, they, they are, have their own board, their, their own legal structure. So, but uh, if they expand it over time, maybe that number could go higher because uh, if you can get sewer, to a quarter acre lot, it's not an issue, but they're only in certain areas. 
So 20 is my guess, but don't quote me on it. <laughs> There's some lots there, but, uh, but then... Yeah, but then you go to certain lots in Southern California, you go, wow, my God, how do they build on that still? So you just don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this over to the mayor because I've taken up way too much of your time. Mayor Christie. I, too, come from elsewhere. I originally came to the States from Canada. I was transferred in the end of 1993 to Chicago, and within four months we had made the decision that we were going to stay. Ironically, my father was born in St. Johnsbury, Vermont, so our family since the 1700s has been back and forth across the border many times. Uh, long story. But anyway, um, I worked for NCR Corporation, National Cash. I was Vice President of Services. And prior to here, I was in Arizona. I was transferred here to take over the Walmart account. When I was in Arizona, we lived in a community similar to this, but it was $285 a quarter. And for that, I got one golf course, I got one lake, and I got a pretty half-decent facility that had swimming pools, but no tennis courts, no pickleball, no squash courts. So back to Tom's point, if anybody ever says 37 bucks is too expensive, no. Other people have said, well, why don't the city, why don't you just take over uh, the POA? Well, legally, it's impossible. And we can have that discussion if you like. But more importantly, your millage rate would go up. Right now, you're paying four mills. And the amount that we can charge without going to you, the voters, is five. Anything over five, then we have to come and ask for your permission. There was a study done in 2014 just how many mills would it go up to if we took over the POA. Your millage would be 24. So, Count your lucky stars that we actually have the POA, because it is a bargain. This year is an election year, and I'm not running for a third term, so we have some folks that have thrown their hats in the ring, and I think they've been circulating around. I see some of their ugly mugs over there. Uh, <laughs> uh, both of the fellows that are here are actually uh, members of city council, so they have experience under their belt. Um, the key thing to remember is in Bella Vista you vote for every council position in every ward. You do not simply vote for the council position in the ward in which you live. That's a big difference from where you may have come from. So it also makes it a little more challenging for those that are running because they have to present their portfolio and their program to the entire community. And frankly, that's not a bad idea at all. I brought some handouts for you. I brought the approved 2022 budget. I also brought our latest financials, which is the end of May. We are always a month behind because it takes the state a full month to get the previous month's tax to us. So we have to sit and wait for that. We're in a excellent, excellent financial position. Our balance sheet is very strong. The acid ratio is, um, is eight to one. That's uh, assets over liabilities. We have over $10 million in cash reserves. So having said that, we have also seen a lot of our costs go up as well. For example, we typically for the last couple of years have spent $2.4 million on repaving the streets. We have 550 miles of streets that's more than the city of Little Rock. And this year we went to bid, the asphalt took a jump of 71%. So we had to put another 1.3 million into the paving budget. And that's tough. And materials are very, very tough as well. I was talking to the president of Nabholtz the other day, which is a construction company that we're working with on a public safety building. And he was just showing me the amounts of increase for all types of, of construction material, and it's, it's bloody awful, quite frankly. I knew it was bad, but I didn't realize it was that bad. 
Has it slowed down the housing? A little bit, but not much, but the interest rates are slowing it down. We have had phenomenal growth since 2014. The aggregate growth of houses here over those years has been 5,200%. The end of 2013, for example, there were 35 new housing permits issued. Last year it was 581. We were on track to probably exceed 600. Right now we flattened out and we're at the same pace as last year, um, and I suspect it may drop back a bit. The homes for sale, not new homes, but the reused homes, the sale inventory was roughly about 40. They like to have 400. And the time on market, unless it was worth more than half a million, was ours. And there were multiple bids. That has now softened as well. And so I think that is also probably the, uh, uh, the reaction to the increase in the interest rates. Um, I've also brought a couple of other handouts, uh, some police fridge magnets, and also a booklet on what's turned out to be probably one of our most popular courses that we run, which is the Citizens Police Academy. I'm wearing a shirt from it. I was in the very first class. Um, I brought that academy with me when I came here from Arizona. Um, I had my real job with NCR, and then on the weekends I was a policeman. And um, so I, I guess I, I can say that the cops are near and dear to my heart. But the police academy has turned out to be very, very popular. We run it twice a year, in the fall and the spring. We take, I think we're back up to 16. We had cut it back to eight as we went through COVID, well, in fact, we canceled it for a full year at one point. But it takes you from the time a call comes into dispatch to eventual resolution of the call. And you go through everything. You actually go out in the field and you do drive-alongs with the police officer. On a weekend, we take you out to the POA gun range and you actually fire the weapons that the police fire under very strict supervision because, as Tom mentioned, I think that's from personal experience, wherever you are. His aim isn't that good. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> um, who arrived after March of 2020? Okay, a lot of people. In March of 2020, Bella Vista floated its first bond. One of the things that I saw when I was running for office in 2014 was the eventual explosion of the population here. You could just see it coming because of what was happening down south of us. Somebody mentioned, you know, about um, uh, the amount of water that's flooding over on Burksdale and, and the hydrology study that we had done. <coughs> south of here, there are 87 square miles of tributaries that feed into Lake Bella Vista. And in the past, there was enough ground to absorb the runoff. Now with all the building, it hits and it runs. And there were not enough detention ponds built in a lot of the new subdivisions. So it runs here, that lake will always flood, and then we have a problem with the golf courses. Now we've got a problem with dogwood, which is right down here. We've had to close that road for, it'll be quite some time, because not only did the road collapse, but the shore of the creek collapsed. So now we're into engineers, we're going to have to get state environmental up here, we'll have to get FEMA up here, we'll have to build a coffer dam, and we're going to have to build up the whole shoulder. So it gets very expensive. But the point being, something's going to have to happen with the dam. The dam and Lake Bella Vista do not belong to Bella Vista or the POA. It belongs to Bentonville. And there's a long sorry story about how that happened at the turn of the century. But that's the reality that we live with. And a lot of people say, well, how come Bentonville isn't fixing it? Because they're in the middle of a court case with Cooper Communities. Cooper wants them to build the dam back up, and Bentonville is saying, we believe that we have the right to make that selection and not you. So it's gone to district court, Bentonville won, Cooper appealed, it went to appellate court, sat there for almost two years. They turned it back down to district court, and that's where it sits now and Bentonville is going to have to make the decision as to whether or not they go to the Supreme Court. Looks like hell. It's an awful mess. 
It looks terrible. I don't like it because um, it just sets a bad example for Bella Vista because that's the name that's attached to the lake. But unfortunately, it's stuck in court limbo. So I'm hoping it's going to get resolved sooner than later. So we floated the bond and we had to get ahead of all the growth because my mantra has been I want to control the growth as much as I can. I don't want the growth to control us. There are cities around here that didn't take that mantra and they're in trouble. One of them is Centerton. Their growth has been so fast and they didn't keep up their infrastructure and they're in a frankly a bit of a pickle. But I saw it coming and so we started. We built a new fire station. This is outside of the bond and opened it in 2016. We opened a new streets department uh, facility up on 279, um, more than what we needed, but we're always building for the future. In the bond of 24.3 million, which will be paid off, by the way, in eight years, because it's self-paying th through a one cent tax that all of the voters agreed to, and because we've been doing so well, and thank God we have the internet tax now, um, we've been able to pay it off faster. But 18 million of that is for the new public safety building, which is up on 279 across from the Boys and Girls Club. That's going to house the police and our court system. We didn't have a court when I first came in. We were down in Bentonville borrowing theirs, paying $8,000 a month for that privilege until the mayor called me and said, we're going to double it because your caseload's going up. And I said, okay, that's enough. And, and we had legislation put through in Little Rock that established our own court. So we started our own court in January 1st of 2018. It's on Lancashire. It's up where Duffers is. Everybody familiar with Duffers? Okay. There's a whole section of those, I think there's three buildings or two buildings up there, and we rent an entire building. It's got the permit department in there and the, and the code enforcement building inspectors, and it also has the court facility. So we're going to move the court into this new public safety. That should be done December of this year. Then they'll start moving and probably actually go into operations in early 2023. It's 46,000 square feet. Is that more than what we need today? Absolutely. Is it more than what we're going to need in 30 years? I doubt it. And that's what we're aiming for is always 30 years out. In fact, we have a land use plan that council passed about a year ago and it actually takes our land use out to the year 2040. So we're continually looking towards the future. Also within that bond we had to replace a fire station out in Glasgow. Fire station number three. The old one was built in 1987 by Cooper. More as a marketing ploy than anything else. Come by land and lots in you know, in the western end, in the highlands, and we actually have a fire station. Well, it was a two-man, and it kind of outgrew itself a long time ago. So we now have a brand new fire station out there thanks to the bond. It's a six-person. It has an ambulance out there with a pumper. Um, and it'll eventually, I'm just trying to remember the relocation of the ladder truck. Well, we have one ladder truck. It's at fire station number one and we've just put an order in for another and it'll be in next year and one of them I think is going to go out to number four or number three. So that'll give better coverage on the west side as well. Also, we're going to be building a fire training facility. It's going to be up near the border where the animal shelter is in that area. Um, so it's away from the homes and whatnot. And every fire fighter has to go through this training every year. So every year we have to send men, ladies, and equipment, because we do have female firefighters, down to some other city and they have to go through the training. Well, what happens if we have a really bad fire and I've got equipment and firefighters outside the city? That doesn't make any sense at all. And so we are going to build this and if something happens, then our own folks are right here and they can respond. The other big thing is we have been told by ISO, which is a rating system that puts a fire rating on each city. They don't care about ambulance. It's your ability to fight fires. That rating is used by most insurance companies, not all. I don't think State Farm uses it. To determine what your fire premium is going to be. 
And when I first came in, this city was a six. The worst you can possibly have is a 10, which is basically good luck, you're on your own with your garden hose. Okay. I would like to get it down to a three. We got it down to a four when we built fire station number four and we made some other improvements. We actually went out and bought five new pumpers. Um, and I'm pleased to say that, by the way, all the short term uh, loans that we took to pay for all this equipment and more, we paid off earlier this year. So we have no short term, uh, no short term debt at all. Um, trying to remember where I'm going with this. The, um, thank you, the insurance. So I'd like to get it to a three. I think we can. They said the biggest thing that you can do is to get a fire training system and tower and that'll really help you get the points that you need in, other, in order to get your point down. I don't think we'll ever better a three because our topography, as you know, is like this. And that's really, really rough on heavy fire trucks and pumpers. Um, so that's the bond. And I'm really excited because we've never had a true police station. Where they are now is a former POA office building. And if you ever want to see what it's like on the inside, let me know and I'll take you on a tour because I've got people sitting in each other's laps as we have grown. Because again, I knew that we had to grow not only the physical infrastructure, but the people as well. When I came in here, there were 22 commissioned officers, patrol officers, so that's sergeant and down. And there were times at night, there was one officer patrolling the whole city, that's 47 square miles. Okay. We have now brought it up to 39 and we have changed the shifts to four tens. It means they work four days a week and 10 hours a day, which adjusts the, uh, uh, the workforce. So at night, there's now four and we have two shifts overlapping. So when the fun begins after the bars close, we actually have eight. <laughs> you laugh, but when I was in Arizona, Friday night was the best night. <laughs> I used to work the all-night shift. Um, so the fire as well has improved. When I came in, there were about 35 fire uh, fighters. We're now over 60, and we're going to apply for a federal grant to see if we can get 12 more. So the infrastructure is there. We stayed ahead of it. Tom has stayed ahead of it here on the POA side, and we need to keep that momentum going. So I know we're short for time, so I'm going to stop there. I'll be around afterwards if you have questions. I saw a hand. No. So. So the question was, the driveway that's going to go into the new training center is it the same as the existing driveway at the lights, where you turn left? And it's an old dirt road and it goes into the transfer station for Republic and it also goes into the animal shelter and the answer is no, which I know you yeah, I mean, That's a private road and it's owned by Cooper and they won't do anything. Uh, no, the road is actually going to be in off, you know where the old welcome center uh, was up there? There's a road that goes into the bush and that's the road that we're going to do. Yes, sir. We don't have any utilities. Um, all the utilities and the easements were granted by Cooper. So when they come in to actually work on their easements, they're no, under no obligation to talk to us at all, and they can basically do what they want. Um, part of the problem, I'm, I'm sorry? The utilities, okay? So they don't have to tell us, uh, for example, when they're gonna bury some cable. Now, are they ever going to bury? You'll see it. Cox is actually out uh, burying some cable now, but they're doing it because Carroll Electric has canceled their joint use agreement with Cox. So over time, they've got to take all the, all the phone lines and the internet lines off the poles and they're going to have to bury it. It is very expensive because we have a lot of rock.
Okay? I was in telecommunications for over 22 years. I can tell you, fiber does not do well unless you have a very, very clean bore and it's going through very easily. Otherwise, it'll fray because it'll split and then you've got a real problem. Um, there's no intent by Carroll Electric to ever bury the, uh, the electric cable. It'll, it'll be aerial, always. Alrighty, I'll be here. Thanks very much.